Mother's Day to all our mothers out there. We hope that though this is a different kind of Mother's Day, that you would still enjoy it with your family, knowing that God is faithful, looking over you. brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another up into love and We're encouraging one another and all the more as you see the team drawing here. Even as you read this, I encourage you guys to just share even to your families and friends to welcome them to watch the service virtually or to watch it later, whatever the case may be. Text them. You're like, oh, I forgot to text. So and so do that now um, as we begin worship and song. God, we honor you. We give you glory, Lord.
doesn't matter what we're going through or what we're feeling or what's in front of us he remains true and constant what we read in his word we can trust because it would not go back go back void it does not lie we can trust when he says he's there and he will make a way God you are a faithful Lord Thank you for being there in every season of our lives. Thank you for being among us now, Lord. You are our precious gift, our true treasure. Remind us of how good you are, Lord. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and promise your truth. Time and time again, you have proven, you do what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faith. setting sing I will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me The earth and pass away, your word remains the same. Mystery can prove there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to.
your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting sun i will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me from stumbling and to present to you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory majesty dominion and authority before all time now and forever amen
grace will hold me fast. Justice has been satisfied. He will hold me fast. Raise with him to endless life. He will hold constant thoughts you know the love that she has in her heart God and I pray Lord that your love and your peace will combat any fears any worries any guilt any shame God Lord that you will cover her at this very moment with your love Lord that you will fill her with your gracious speech, your kindness, your forgiving love. God, I pray that you remind her that in you, as she is saved and fully restored by your grace and mercy, that there is no such thing as generational curses that may be a part of her family. God, that that is broken at the cross, God that today is a new day and a new start, God. To be a mom full of love and grace and patience and mercy and kindness, God. Lord, that you trust in you for the story of her children, for the testimony of her children, God. And that she would trust in you for her story, her testimony. That she would trust in you for her marriage, for her friendships, God for her relationships, Lord, that you will overwhelm her with your love, God, and your peace, King, that she will learn to find peace in your presence, that she will learn to find wisdom in your word, that she will really know what it means that you are her firm foundation, that you are the one that really holds on to her, that keeps her sane, that keeps her calm. So God, may today she be reminded that you are a faithful God who is after her heart, is after her, her marriage, her relationship, and her kids, God, and that we can trust you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. City Lights, we hope you enjoy the rest of today's service by our Pastor Alex. Have a great Mother's Day. And for those who do not have a mother today, think about the greatest memories that you had with your mother or mother-like 
characters in your in your life think about those good times and the love and the joy that you had with them have a great service thank you good morning city lights and welcome to our virtual service i'm pastor alex one of the pastors at city lights church and i want to welcome you to our virtual mother's day service so moms happy mother's day i'm hoping this morning your children have taken the time to honor you and demonstrate their love and gratitude for everything you've done i also want to give a bit of a disclaimer to be a mother is not just to have your own natural children. There is such a thing called a spiritual mom, a woman who pours out her hearts for others, a woman who shows other children, other young adults, what it is to love Christ and serve Him. So to all you women, happy Mother's Day on behalf of City Lights and all of our pastors. This morning I want to tell you a story of a simple woman of radical faith. I've entitled today's sermon, A Woman of Faith. And we're going to be preaching from 2 Kings chapter 4, starting in verse 8. This woman was not known for anything great, any great feats like Rebecca, who masterminded the plot for her son Jacob to get the blessing from her father. And you can find that in Genesis chapter 26 and 27. Or Jael, who pounded a tent peg into the head of her enemy. Judges chapter 4, 21. Or Mary, the mother of Jesus, who the, Gabriel, the, the angel Gabriel told her that she would bear the Savior, our Lord, our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1. No, she did nothing remarkable like that. She was by all accounts just another person. But when we take a closer look at the scriptures, we see that she was a mother. M-O-T-H-E-R. A woman who modeled faith. An open-hearted woman. Trusted and hospitable. An empathetic person who rejoices in God. This woman is, even, is, is not even mentioned in the Bible by her name. But instead, by where she lives the city she lives. She was known as the Shunammite woman. Just imagine you're called the lady who lives in Humble Park, the lady who lives in Reese Park, the lady over there down the street. We don't know her name, but we know about her by her character. We know that she models faith. This morning, we're going to unpack her story. In 2 Kings chapter 4. And when we unpack these scriptures, you will see that she is a woman to be emulated, a woman to be copied. You will see that she fits the description of hope without wavering and stirs others to love and good works. Hebrews chapter 10. As I studied this, this past couple of weeks, I went through the Jewish commentaries and I found that they, were, that they would call her a gadola, a great woman. Her faith earned her the title in Jewish commentaries as a gadola, a great woman. So let's see her story. Let's turn to 2 Kings chapter 4, starting in verse 8. We'll read the first section and then we'll begin expounding on God's word. One day Elijah went on to Shuman, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there, and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. 
And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And he said, at this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord. O man of God, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived and she bore a son about that time, the following spring, as Elisha had said to her. I want to stop right there. See, this entire section of scripture is about a woman who has no children. In those days, having no children was considered a curse of God. Without a child, you had no one to receive the inheritance. And the prophet tells her that she was going to conceive and have a son. The son grows up. We don't know how old he is, but he was old enough to go work in the fields with his dad. He gets a headache, and they send him home so that mom can take care of him. But he dies. This sounds like a horrible story. Sounds like the worst Mother's Day story ever. But we learn quickly that this woman had radical faith. As a woman, she modeled faith. In verse 9, she demonstrates that she is a woman of faith. She tells her husband that the prophet is a man of God. She knew who the prophet of God was. She was a woman who went and celebrated Jewish holidays. She was a woman who understood the prophet was the voice of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 12, it says, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers as an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. See, when Paul writes this to Timothy, this isn't just for those who are young, but it's for all of us to live with a conduct of a believer in speech, in our actions, in conduct, in love, and in faith, in purity. In the midst of this tragedy, she models faith in her speech, in her conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. The Shunammite woman was an open-hearted person, kind, honest, and generous. In verse 8, she urges the prophet to eat. And whenever he was around, he came over for dinner because there was always an open invitation for him. Isaiah 32, 8. Says, but he who is noble plans noble things, and on noble things he stands. This verse is all about being open hearted. Noble things are to be honest, kind, and generous. The very thing this woman demonstrated in her life. She was also trusted in verses 9 and 10. She speaks to her husband. And she says to her husband, Behold now, I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. She was trusted. Let us make is best translated from the Hebrew to say, I pray thee. She was asking her husband. She wasn't demanding from her husband. Again, demonstrating her godly character by how she spoke to him. Verse 11 teaches us that her husband did what his wife wanted so that the prophet could visit. So that the prophet can visit whenever he was around. Imagine that. They made a small room on the top of their roof. 
If you've ever been to the Caribbean or if you're from Puerto Rico or any of those islands, you know that people typically build on the roofs because they're flat. This was the same thing in biblical times. The husband, this husband trusted his wife, so he built a room for her guest, the prophet. Proverbs 31, 11 says, The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. Guys, you got to understand, this woman modeled faith. This woman is hoping-hearted and trusted. She also exemplified hospitality because she opens her home to the prophet of God. And you never hear her ask for anything. No, there was no selfish ambitions. She could have asked him. She could have tried to say, hey, prophet, since I took care of you, can you do me a favor? Even when he asked her, what does she want? Do you want to stand in front of the king? Do you want to stand in front of the commander of the armies? She said, no. She says, I have my own people. Humility in her heart displayed. No, she didn't need anything from the prophet for what she did. She served. This woman was a woman of faith. But when her son dies, she takes him to the roof, to the bedroom that they had made for the prophet. She lays him on the prophet's bed and closes the door behind him. She calls her husband not to vent, cry, complain, scream, point her finger at God, but instead to ask that he get her a servant and a donkey. Her husband was puzzled. He sent his son home with the headache. And he was not even aware that his son had died and is now dead on the bed of the prophet. And his wife wants a servant and a donkey. In verse 23, and he said, will you go to him today? Is it neither new moon nor Sabbath? She said, all is well. All is well. The new moon and the Sabbath were Jewish holidays. The Shunammite woman was a woman of faith. And she responds, all is well. All is well. All is well. I want you to see into the heart of this woman. Like all of us, like all people. She needed answers. She was not ready to tell her husband that their son had died. She needed answers. And the prophet was nearby. He lived at Mount Carmel, which was a short distance from her home. She knew where to find him. She knew. And she needed answers. She needed to know why. Ladies, my brothers, the presence of God is always nearby. She was a woman of faith, a crazy, radical faith that believed in the promises of God. Her son was a promise. If you are in Christ, if you are filled with faith in Jesus Christ, he promised to leave you the Holy Spirit to comfort you, to guide you, and sanctify you. John 14, 15. Turned her quickly. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, 
for he dwells with you and will be in you. The presence of God is always with us. The Holy Spirit empowers us. The Holy Spirit empowers you. The Holy Spirit empowers your faith. The Shunammite woman was a woman of faith. Her son symbolizes all of the promise that we hold in our hearts. Her son symbolizes our children that are not serving God. Our children that we pray for daily. Our children whose fathers have abandoned their roles. Our children who we all place before the throne of God. Before his very presence, knowing that he is nearby. She needed answers, y'all. She needed answers. She modeled faith. She was an open-hearted woman who could be trusted, who demonstrated hospitality to the man of God, to the prophet of the Lord. She needed answers for the promise. 1 Timothy 5.10 And having a reputation for good works, if she has brought up children, has shown hospitality, has washed the feet of the saints, has cared for the afflicted, and has devoted to herself to every good work. We see through the, the scriptures that her heart was for God. She devoted herself to good works. So why was the promise gone? So from the very beginning of verse 8, this woman, this Shunammite woman, shares what she has. She cares for others. She's empathetic. She was a woman who knew the burdens of others. See, the prophet Elisha was actually emotionally detached. We see that he speaks through his servant and doesn't necessarily speak directly to her. I truly believe this woman of faith, this Shunammite woman, knew how the prophet felt. She knew because she experienced the same loneliness as a barren woman, a woman that didn't have a child. She knew how the prophet felt in his heart because he was not seen like his mentor, Elijah. He didn't get the same respect right away. And you can read about his prophetic ministry in 2 Kings chapter 2 and 3. The Shunammite woman filled with empathy, filled with empathy, filled with faith, welcomed this man of God into her home, a woman of faith. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 6, starting in verse 2. And it says, Bear one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ. Her heart filled with empathy. She bared the burdens of the prophet as well. And when he asked her, what do you want? She said, nothing. Nothing. A model of faith. An open-hearted woman. Trusted and hospitable. An empathetic person. But now, she needed answers. So she gets on that donkey. Like getting in the donkey is like getting in your Cadillac. And she tells her servants, don't stop. Don't slow down for me. Keep going. She knew where she was going. She needed answers. She was a woman of faith. When chaos breaks loose in your life, when your children rebel, when life gets beyond difficult, when the promises of God seem lost. You must. You must hold on to your faith. See, the prophets of the Old Testament were there to reveal the nature and the attributes of God to His people. They were the voice of God to humanity in those days. When you need answers for the chaos of life, when you need answers for the lost promises, you turn to God. You turn to His Word. 
Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 12. Verse 12 and 13. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The Apostle Paul wrote the letter to the church of Philippi while in prison. He was suffering for the cause of Christ. He was suffering for his faith. This verse is so often misused. What Paul meant is that in the middle of your suffering, in the middle of your pain, in the middle of the lost promises, God will give you strength. He will give you strength that you need to persevere. But you must go to him. You have to be like the Shunammite woman, a woman of faith willing to jump on, on that donkey and seek out the man of God. Today you don't need a donkey nor a prophet. You have the Holy Spirit who will guide you, who will strengthen you. He will give you comfort. The story of the Shunammite woman does not end in tragedy. The promise was not lost the prophet goes to see the boy and he's resurrected. She was a woman of faith. She was a woman of radical faith. See, we can all learn something from this woman of faith. We don't need to know her name. We don't. Because we know her by her character. A woman of radical faith who trusted in the prophet of God. This woman believed in God and did all to show his glory in her good works. The resurrection of Jesus Christ reminds us that the promises of God are fulfilled in, his, in the life and death and the resurrection of his son. And those promises are ours. Ladies, those promises that seem lost when chaos and despair exist, we must Turn to God and rest in his promises of salvation. The resurrection was the greatest promise ever given to us because it reminds us that we have been given eternity by the work of Christ. Mother, a model of faith, an open-hearted, trusted, and hospitable woman, an empathetic person who rejoices in God. Psalm 6410 says, Let the righteous, let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart exult. In verse 37 in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 37, it says, She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. She falls to her feet. The promise was alive. Her faith was tested. God answered her prayers and she rejoiced. She rejoiced. A mother, a model of faith, an open-hearted, trusted, and hospitable woman, an empathetic person who rejoices in God. I'm going to conclude with this. We can all learn from this woman of faith. Some of us are here because we had a praying mother who believed that God would rescue us from our depravity. They prayed and prayed and prayed. I know that when I was a young man, I lived rebellious. I was dead to my sins. But 
I had a mom who prayed. I had a mom who prayed. My wife, Maria, had a mom who prayed. There are mothers out there right now praying for their sons and daughters to be right with God. Their promise. To live according to the scriptures. Can I help you? Remember this. That mother is M, a model of faith. Model your faith to your children, mothers. Model your faith to your neighbor's children's mother. Model your faith. And oh, open-hearted woman, trusted and hospitable, an empathetic person who rejoices in God. And this is how we should all live our lives in the service of God. Mothers, today we honor all of your prayers. Today we honor all that you do for your children, for the countless sacrifices. We honor you. And on behalf of all the children, on behalf of everyone you've impacted, I want to say thank you. Thank you, moms. I leave you with this poem. What is a mother? A mother is someone to shelter and guide us, to love us, whatever we do, with a warm understanding and infinite patience and wonderful gentleness too. How often a mother means swift reassurance in soothing our small childish fears. How tenderly mothers watch over their children and treasure them all through the years. The hearth of a mother is full of forgiveness for any mistake, big or small, and generous always in helping her family, whose need she has placed above all. A mother can utter a word of compassion and make all our cares fall away. She can brighten the home with the sound of her laughter and make life delightful and gay. A mother possesses incredible wisdom and wonderful insight and skill in each human heart is that one special corner which only a mother can fill. This is a poem by Katrin Nelson Davis. I want to close with this. For all of you who have not had the kind of mother that the Shunammite woman is, you always had Christ. His sufficiency is greater than any human person. His sufficiency is greater than a father, than a mother in the flesh. He points us to the father, the great father, who loved us so much that he sent his son to die for our sins. So if today you hear this message and you say, well, I didn't have a mom like that, just know you had a Father in Heaven who cared even more. A Father in Heaven who loved you beyond anything you can imagine that He thought about you for eternity. That He opened His heart to you and He drew you close to Him that by His grace you know Him through His Son Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Moms, happy Mother's Day. Enjoy your day. And continue being a model of faith like this Shunammite woman. Continue displaying your love. Continue displaying Christ to all. Bow our heads. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the mothers who have loved, cared, prayed, wept, and have done everything for us. And Lord, I pray that you give us a peace that surpasses all understanding for all of those who have lost their moms, who never had a mom, but that they know that you were sufficient for them. We love you, Lord. 
And we give you praise and honor because you, God, are worthy of all praises and honors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the city lights. Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy your day and have a great time. God bless. Bye.